What's going on YouTube? So I know some of you guys probably already know that PlayStation has released the final version of the beta update. So the update that gives you access to the SSD expansion slots inside the PS5 is now official. And if you've been waiting to pick up an SSD because you know you couldn't get into the beta program or you wanted to just wait till the official update was released, then now is the time. About a month ago, I made a video when the beta program was released testing out one of the SSDs that was compatible. There's multiple options for M.2 SSDs that you guys can pick from. So I'm going to be going over a few in this video, three to be exact, and then I'll give you guys a few other options that I'm pretty sure work superbly. These M.2 SSDs are all compatible, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. We're just going to be going over the different speeds to see if that even matters at all. During the beta testing phase, I initially installed a Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte SSD into my PlayStation 5. I've run into no issues at all, like overheating or anything like that using the Samsung 980 Pro, and I'm talking about over a month now. So what I did is I went ahead and picked up another 980 Pro to test out the speed to see if it would be different as opposed to the original one, which was at about 5576. All you need is a minimum of 5,500 for your read speed, according to PlayStation. So even though the Samsung 980 Pro promises about 7,000, it only shows up on the PlayStation as 5,576. And honestly, that still passes the minimum requirement for read speed. The speed is still the same even after purchasing a whole new Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte drive. So seems like it's the same across certain drives, the same speed. But I've also heard that you can update these drives using the PC. So if you have a PC with an M.2 slot inside of it, you can go ahead and try to do that to increase the speed. I'm gonna go over three different drives at three different read speeds so you guys can see the transfer rates and you can tell me which one you think is better or even if the read speed matters very much. I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all, but I'm saying let's see how much it matters. So I'm going to test out the Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte at 5,576. Then I'm gonna test out the Sabrent 4 Plus. So this is also a one terabyte drive. The Sabrent drive hits 6,500 for the read speed. So in comparison to the Samsung 980 Pro, it's about a thousand faster. The last M.2 SSD I'll be testing the read speed of is the XPG GameX S70 Blade. So this one was sent to me by Adata for a test and a review. So we're gonna go over all three of them. The Adata one has a speed of about 6,000. So here's all three of them in my hands right now. I'm gonna slot them all into the PS5 to test out the different read speeds, and then we'll go from there. And just so you guys know, I'm not saying these are the only ones out there in the market. There's tons of other ones out there, and there's probably gonna be more out in the future. I don't think I've seen any of these SSDs go above 7,000 in the read speed. So the lowest one I found is the Samsung 980 Pro, which is at 5,500, and the highest one I found is the Sabrent at 6,500. The WD Black SN 850 is another really good one that gets up to 6,500 from what I've seen from other people. Another really good one that seems to be the best on paper is the Fire Cuda. 530. So that one is not readily available right now. It's not all over the place. Like me personally, I haven't been able to get my hands on one yet. But basically, it's supposed to be a little bit faster, if anything. I don't really think it's going to matter, even if it is a little bit faster. Another M.2 SSD worth considering is the Gigabyte Aorus 7000S. So this one comes with onboard heatsink. So that's one of the most important things you need to note. You need to have some kind of cooling structure. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. There's different ways you can go about it. There's three cooling structures that I found so far that you can use with the PS5 and the M.2 SSD. The first one is a low profile one-sided heatsink. So that's what I used when I initially installed my Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte drive during the beta test. The second one is a double-sided heatsink. So that's the one that I would recommend most of you guys go for because it seems like it's the best way to go about it according to PlayStation because that's what they used in their installation video. The GameX, which is one of the SSDs I'll be testing in this video, it comes with a low-profile one-sided optional heatsink. So you can use that or you can go ahead and pick up a double-sided one. The final cooling structure I found is the one made by Sabren. So you basically replace the silver covering for the M.2 SSD slot with this little uh, heatsink. I think it's pretty cool and I think it's going to work very well. Go ahead and pick whichever ones you guys fancy. I'll also be showing you guys how to quickly install the M.2 SSD into your PS5. For this installation process, I'm going to be using the XPG GameX S70 Blade, 
one terabyte drive. So this drive goes up to 7,400 megabytes in speed, but obviously it does not hit that amount when plugged into the PlayStation 5. So it hits about 6,000. It also says on the purchase page on Amazon that the drive comes with pre-installed aluminum heat spreader. This drive also comes with an optional heat sink. This is just one of many options that you guys can go for, but I'm going to be using this one in this video to show you guys how to install an SSD using a low profile heat sink. So you can always use a double sided heat sink as well. I've linked one that's compatible with all of these M.2 SSDs down in the description below. So make sure to check that out if you don't want to use a low profile one sided heat sink. Installation process is pretty easy for both of them. One thing you'll notice on this drive is that it says the warranty is void if you take off the sticker. So I'm not going to be taking that off. I'm going to leave it on there and follow what the manufacturer says. Like I said earlier, the provided optional heat sink is a one sided one. All you have to do is match the screw hole of the drive to the screw hole on the heatsink. Next up, you want to pull off the gold sticker that's protecting the adhesive on the heatsink. And then you want to align the heatsink to the shape of the SSD. Make sure that the screw holes align as well. Very important. Then you want to press the both of them together lightly so they attach to each other. And then you're pretty much done with the heatsink and the M.2 SSD combo. And now we're going to get this into the PlayStation 5. If you've bought one with an onboard heatsink, all you have to do is skip that first part and directly come to this take off the stand if you have it mounted vertically or horizontally it doesn't matter you still need to take off the stand to get the cover off you want to make sure that the power button is on your left side so your left hand is where it should be and it should be facing away from your body and then all you have to do is grab the top side and the bottom side and just pull them up next thing you want to do is take off the one screw that's protecting or covering the SSD slot now we're into the M.2 SSD slot so you're going to take off one more screw and a washer this time as you can see right in that corner there's four screw holes for different SSD sizes you want to stick it in number 80 so the washer is what you want to stick in there first grab the SSD and the heatsink combo so one-sided or two-sided whichever one you decided to use and all you have to do is align it straight in that slot put it in diagonally from the top it should be sticking out from the bottom side just like you see in the video go ahead and push down the SSD and then use the screw that came with the washer to hold it in place that's all it is it should be flush and smooth when you're done with it all right there if it's not flush then you have done something wrong so retrace your steps and make sure it's flush and smooth try to cover it up if you cannot cover up yours then you might have a heat sink that's too large for that once it's all screwed in tight all you have to do now is cover it back up make sure that you have the sharp pointy ends pointing towards the direction where they go into the holes on the back side right there once you hear a nice click then you know it should be pretty much secure you can always pick it up to make sure that it's pretty much secure do not forget to attach your stand back on as well this test is intended to give you guys an idea what the difference in speed will feel like on the console so I'm going to test out transferring a few games between the console and the M2 SSD and then I'm going to transfer those games right back from M.2 SSD to console storage first in is the one we've just installed so the read speed for this is 6091.688 and this is the GameX S70 I'm gonna go ahead and move a couple of games directly from the console storage into this XPG GameX S70 blade so NBA 2k21 and Ratchet and Clank so I've sped up the whole video as you can see eight times faster so you guys don't have to watch for two minutes while this whole thing happens I've also included the original timing on the bottom left corner there as you can see you'll notice that there's not much difference but I'll let you guys go ahead and see the differences right here we're going to move it back from M2 SSD to the console storage and as you can see I've got this one at 20 times faster because it's a lot longer so 9 minutes and 51 seconds is how long it takes to transfer a couple of games at about 134.9 gigabytes from M.2 SSD to internal SSD on the PlayStation 5 Next up is Sabrent's Rocket 4 Plus at 6558.734 megabytes per second. 
for the read speed. We're going to run the same comparisons and move games from the console storage directly to M.2 now again. And as you can see, it's at eight times faster, just like the last one, but the original is one minute, 48 seconds and 0 0.7 milliseconds. So this one's a little quicker than the other one, but just by 11 seconds. That's really nothing in my opinion. Copying those two games right back from the M.2 SSD to the console storage, 134.9 gigabytes, 20 times faster to avoid boring you guys with a long video. But this one, the original is still at nine minutes, 51 seconds and 0 0.6 milliseconds. So it's still the same when copying from M.2 SSD onto the console's SSD. The final drive we'll be testing, the Samsung 980 Pro, goes at 5576.325, so our slowest. We're going to run the same test again and copy NBA 2K21 and Ratchet and & Clank, just like we did with the other two drives. You'll notice that the original speed for this one is 1 minute, 51 seconds, and 0 0.6 milliseconds, which is in between the first and the second one we tested. I'll still say that the difference in copying from the console to M.2 SSD is fairly the same across all of them because the difference is only in seconds. So about 11 seconds is the maximum difference between them. Right here, we're copying back from M.2 SSD directly onto the console storage. And as you can see, the original remains the same. So across all three of them, copying from M.2 to the console's internal SSD is the same. The performance is also going to be the same across all of them. And I'm talking about gameplay, so do not worry about that as well. I already did a video testing out Ratchet & Clank with the Samsung 980 Pro. Check out that video at the top of the screen right now. Okay, so from what I've noticed during this entire test, the speed does not matter. The read speed should not be a main reason why you pick one of these M.2 drives. You want to focus on the pricing, so the cost. Go for a cost effective one. The cheapest one you can find that fulfills all of the criteria specified by PlayStation. There's no need to overspend on any one of these drives. Some of these drives that come with an onboard heatsink tend to cost more than the ones that come without a heatsink. And it takes no time at all attaching a heatsink to a drive. If you're looking to pick up any one of these drives or a heatsink, anything at all, go ahead and check down in the description below. I'll have a few links that you guys can use, check prices, you know, the best prices out there. Right now on Amazon Canada, there's so many deals for some of these drives, like two of the ones I'm talking about in this video are already discounted right now. So this is a Brent Rocket 4 Plus and the Samsung 90 Pro 1 terabyte. If you found this video helpful, interesting, or fun to watch, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. I will see you guys in my next video. It's Midas. And I'm out of here, y'all.